Can you see this? All right. Can you hear us? Yep. We're good. We're good. We're good? We're good. Okay. I don't know what to <laughs> do with my I don't hands. Know. <laughs> I don't know what to do with all right everybody thank you so much for checking in with us we are the millennials i'm pat i'm ruby and uh i'm sam <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> all right well it's been a while how are you guys doing how are you guys doing great great doing good i'm feeling the new setup that's how i'm doing <laughs> yeah we have a new setup welcome back to the new setup uh we kind of left you guys waiting, wanting more, and uh, here it is. Here's the more. So uh, we're here back in 2018, and uh, we're doing it. <laughs> we're doing it. So we're bringing a new format, and what do we have planned? So, okay, so where we left off was back in 2017, actually, a while ago on the podcast. Um, and it's just been a roller coaster of a ride ever since. I mean, basically, we've all done, our, or at least Ruby and I have had career changes, uh, vehicle changes. Um, Sam's been all over the place, traveling, working. Uh, we've yeah. been plotting, strategizing what we're going to be doing with the podcast, what we're going to be doing with our company. And uh, here we are, and this is it. We've been talking about this. You guys heard it uh, on our previous podcast on the audio format, uh, how we were going to take it in this direction, moving into the uh, video f uh, platform. And so this is what we're doing right here. Uh, Sam is our first guest. He's our business partner uh, with the Relenials, uh, along with Ruby and I. And yes, yeah, so this is it. Um, so a lot of exciting things. We actually want to start off with some current events. We are going to try to keep you guys current on what's going on just in general. Um, but there's a few things that we wanted to talk about. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of American Airlines 2763. Have you guys heard about American Airlines 2763? What happened? No. It's tragic. They had to, this American Airlines 2763 had to stop in Kansas City. Uh, yesterday, maybe today. I don't know. Dang, what happened? What happened? Well, there was Fill an there was an intoxicated man that would not stop doing push-ups. <laughs> they stopped the plane and let him off. So How did they that really it? happened here. It was a flight from Phoenix to Boston. Can you imagine? You no, know, I think I saw him at the gym earlier today. You know, <laughs> I think he just came he down just from MCI. Kept you know? doing those push-ups. <laughs> did he do more push-ups than Sam? No, never, never. Do you do uh, that on planes? You know the time arises that you know you need the flight attendant to respect you oh you then do, you, you got to do some push-ups you oh, know of course so i mean what was he thinking <laughs> like immediately what comes to mind for me is uh back in the day when the, there was like those essays that used to be like oh i'm tough you know and then they would just be doing like tons of push-ups <laughs> just to like prove it basically i mean that's the like equivalent of like what i guess marines do like in competition with each other or marines or any uh military there yeah right, push-ups but it's like it's a commercial flight you know what was he doing what was it? he boarded the plane already intoxicated with yeah. a woman and two dogs and he continued to <laughs> order drinks on the plane from phoenix to boston and the the um flight attendants asked him three or four times to stop i think he was also doing pull-ups he was using the um overhead compartments to do pull-ups uh, <laughs> can you imagine being on this flight like what would you guys do if you're caution if you're your bro? luggage may shift when somebody's <laughs> doing pull-ups on the luggage rack <laughs> so they did I what's bet he right. was like i'll show you guys turbulence <laughs> well how far did they have to go or, like... they're going from phoenix to boston well, that sounds about right so yeah but, like here. the question is <laughs> like the real difficult they let question him off. was he like is he from boston or is he from phoenix boston like he's gotta be from boston Ooh, a little Either Both either answer is appropriate for that scenario. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he probably was a Boston bro that went to ASU. Yep. Guaranteed. We'll we'll research this and get back to you. This is breaking news in Kansas City, so Anyways, I thought I'd bring uh, that up. Apparently everybody landed safely, hopefully. I mean, they stopped here and I think Except for the dudes he flexed on. <laughs> 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 That's nuts, but oh, I thought that was yeah. hilarious, so I wanted to bring that up i don't know if anybody knew that happened oh my goodness what else you have some bright 
Or yeah, was- there's some fresh news that happened recently in Kansas City. Kander, uh, right? K- Casey Mo, um, Jason Kander, who is the leading, uh, he's a, in fact, considered a rising Democratic star in general for the entire Democratic platform across the country. But he was running for the Kansas City mayor position. Yeah. He was, uh, he ran for, I think, a Senate position or a Congress position uh, previously and uh-huh. then dropped out. But he, um, or or just lost maybe he didn't drop out but he was recently running for mayor of kansas city missouri anyways he recently raised the most funds most campaign funds of any kansas city mayor ever by a long shot and on the night that he received the news that he should have been celebrating he um was on the phone apparently according to his own facebook post he was on the phone with uh, the va crisis hotline oh wow uh, with suicidal thoughts and it's actually like it's actually like it's 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 quite stunning actually mm-hmm. um because the, the, the mental health is something that like historically we have known and we've grown up with as something that's such a stigma and that people don't talk about um Absolutely. and it's a, it's something that we all in general value and um the awareness of and promote awareness of and <clears throat> but not to, not to interrupt but you know Thinking back to, you know, how I was raised and religiously, Uh you know, that was just something, you know, I don't know. I've had some spouts with depression and stuff, but like that's something that everybody views as just controllable. And it's something that uh, you suppress and that you don't talk about. And it's crazy when you see somebody that, I mean, arguably he was successful yeah and uh okay uh you know as i was saying like just just growing up in in general in a a very i wouldn't say very conservative but a catholic family where we view you know suicide as as a sin and something that is uh, a character flaw you know uh i think it is hard to to reach out and to and to seek help for people that are truly trying to find help and you know you see it at all levels and and you know it's it's something that's chemical in your mind it's not it's not something that's even controllable yeah but and that's that's a, it's, it's interesting that's very that's a very important point and I'll, I'll i'll come back to that but like what is like really profound is the fact that i don't know if any of you guys have seen house of cards oh yeah where uh there was like not. a it was a particular plot point where the president who who was the current president at the time he um it was a big deal when it was found out that he was like seeing a therapist and taking mm-hmm. like antidepressants yeah and that, mm-hmm. and, and that's indicative why do you think that is? of like it be, well why did they portray it in the show is because or, it's, it's indicative of what is reality yeah yeah right? like how, so. how it how it played out Absolutely. in the show um and I, I could give you my observations why, like, I believe that that has happened. And it's just, I mean, it's historical. At least I can give you my perspective from the context of how I grew up. And I think Hispanic in general, uh, when I when I grew up, and maybe you could speak to this too, I noticed in the Hispanic culture that depression um, is, and depression in anything medical is looked at as something that's not a serious thing like in terms of uh emotions or in terms of like mental illness they yeah. they'll say get it together like figure it out the first thing that they say will never be let's go see a therapist mm-hmm. they say like, you're being lazy you're being sad you're oh, being absolutely. emotional figure it out it's never like you have a problem and maybe in reality maybe i don't know it could be argued there's pre- there's people that will argue that that that's true like you do need to figure it out and you do need to have that but the the truth is probably lies somewhere in the middle right like you probably do need to figure some shit out and probably need help with other stuff. And that's what the problem is, is that people are not ready to meet in the middle, you know? I mean, but, do you think that having depression um, and having uh, an unstable chemical mind, you know, an unbalance in your mind like that, does that affect your decision making? It does. And, it and absolutely I think does. that's... People and, don't understand that. And uh, It you affects know, and your I kinda, life in general. 
Well, and I wonder if, I mean, and when you have a politician at the highest, at the pinnacle of politics, I mean, somebody that is battling but, depression, well, that's is that, he, is that's that he, somebody that's why he that pulled himself out of the race? He pulled yeah. himself out of the mayoral race. It, I think that's, it, that's uh, responsible. Yeah, I, that's it's responsible. admirable. It is responsible. It, it, the, what's admirable, well, okay, that's, in my opinion, that's just doing the right thing. Yeah. Right? But it, what is admirable is that he spoke about it publicly. And he didn't he could, say something else, like, I have family issues yeah, or personal, i need to take time issues. off or yeah and uh but and, maybe he's doing that to uh speak to people that are already out there that are maybe in situations that they want to find help and, that's, and it's it, precisely why he's doing so, it so he's I sacrificing mean, his political career in order to bring attention to that yeah. ideology of mental health care and that's so profound to me um yeah. I was, I was, I've never been like, oh, Jason Kander this, Jason Kander that, or whatever. I've never, I, I knew about him. I knew he was kind of progressive. I knew he was a Democrat, and I, and I always um, was like okay with people supporting him, but I didn't understand. I think it's pretty historical, actually, what he's done. I don't think anyone in politics has ever, with his level of success, made that. Uh, announcement, that type announcement, of announcement. That kind of uh, move in the direction. And he, he said, I know what you know i'm i'm working towards understanding what is happening to me and i know that there are other people out there like that and i couldn't pretend that i'm not going through that and i couldn't i'm just paraphrasing i'm sorry i could uh check out his he has a very public facebook post if you're on facebook uh, please read the whole thing mm-hmm. if you're able to um i'll, I'll do, need to do that too but he he, he examines himself uh thoroughly and he d- explains why it would be inappropriate for him to continue running given the circumstances Mm -hmm. um but he wants more than anything for people to understand that every single person or any given person can go through um this kind of thing him specifically it was ptsd uh from his military expenses uh, experiences while he was um overseas and Basically, he came to the realization that he was not capable of dealing with it emotionally by himself without help, without psychiatric help, uh, potentially without medication. Um, and he understood that that could potentially be a detriment. Not that he's doesn't have the right thing in mind for the direction of what he was trying to take Kansas City in terms of the mayor, but the effort and energy it takes to become healthy from that place, he understood that that would outweighed what he was capable of doing in terms of being mayor. Yeah. Do you think he, at any point, had been politically compromised because of this? Do you think this Ooh. was uh, a choice that was not of his own? Ooh. That's technically a, a, real, a possibility. I mean, yeah, that is a possibility. I, I wonder about that. I wonder if that could have been a, something that the opposition discovered, and it is disgusting that they would use something like that. But I think in the political atmosphere that we see of our times anything's on the table it could be i think you know i think it's great that he's at least being open about it and that's the type of person that i look up to as a leader that is open about what they're going through and is human and is doing the right things and so i really commend that action um but that's news you know that's why we wanted to bring it up today and the topic of mental health is is a hot one and you know mental health self self self-care taking care of yourself that's all important to us so you know he's doing that all you people out there should be doing that we should be doing that so um good for him good good job yeah that's that's certainly a step in the in the right direction it's it's interesting because it brings together two topics that are generally like at the top of the tier of conversation at this time and it's mental health and it's politics yeah and he's a politician and he's suffering from a mental health issue and i think people like to pretend and historically have pretended that they're separate they like to pretend that every single person that's ever ran for ever position is mentally stable and like knows the right thing or has the right thing in mind for uh or it's coming from the right place but they're human they go through the things and <laughs> now they're being open about it i'd argue that most people have no faith in politicians but at least uh, we see somebody that is you know addressing personal issues as opposed to taking it with them into an office he was arguably the front runner and if this was that. something that mm-hmm. was going to compromise his mayoral ship and into kansas city I'm glad that, uh, you know, he's taking care of himself. And that's what we do. I, I you know, I, th- I think that's something that you have to do. Uh, 
take care of yourself mentally before you can um, force that upon people. I Especially agree. decisions that are going to affect thousands of people on a daily basis. Something that has affected millions of people is... Have you guys... Did you guys get hacked? This Facebook hack. I don't know <sighs> if you guys have heard about it. It happened uh, about a week ago. They uh, Facebook announced that 40, 40 million people, 50 million people were hacked. I think um, I was hacked. I was hacked. I had, I to, had to re-log wait, in. How did you know I had that to you were hacked? In because I had to re-log in. Well... I'm like, if you were hacked, they gave you a announcement on the top of your Facebook about oh, security. Yeah. I did not get an announcement. I think I did get it. I don't remember. I just remember I had a meeting that day and me and the person I was meeting with, we both were like, he, he logged into Facebook and he was like, wait, I had to re-log in. And I'm checking my phone right And now. that morning, <laughs> that, um, that afternoon, I saw that article and I sent it over to the person I was meeting with and I was like, hey, I... We both had to do that. Well, I think we got hacked. So this is the biggest security breach that Facebook has had ever in its history. 50, 50 million people were were hacked. Were you hacked? Was your Facebook hacked? Me and Sam's were. Pat's was not. Mine and Jessica's was not. Yeah, that's sad. 40, 50 million people got hacked. And this is the biggest security breach Facebook has seen up until this point. And I think... What what people were saying what, when I was wa- reading about this was that it's the it's the type of access that they got they got access to everything. Your third party apps could also be affected. So mm. if you sign in with Facebook onto other applications, those could be affected as well. They have full access. I specifically to everything. do not ever do that. It's so easy though. Just yeah, no. Sign mm. in. I specifically am like what? no. When. You, do you use your Facebook to log into other applications such like, as dating apps and or oh I may have done it with Bumble. Nope, I verified my profile on Bumble you. with a picture. Oh, somebody's gonna go change all your stuff. I went like this. <laughs> they and do that? They change they, it no, to they, somebody. No, they give you like that Brian picture Gosling. where they're like they're like do th- <laughs> do this in their in your picture right now and submit it to us. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know they did that. Yeah. They're like, so they're like, right now, submit us a picture with a peace sign. And I was like, okay. Okay, like, people don't already have a million of those in their phone already. But I didn't verify it with my Facebook. Maybe I did when I first signed up. Well, so here's here's what... Anyways, Bumble. Here's what's happening with mm. this Facebook thing. It, it was it, it was announced. Go read up on it. Um, there's a really good article on Wired that talks about everything that's going on. Um, they are not really even saying to change your password or anything. I don't know. I honestly don't know what to do about it. I haven't read into it that much, but we're what just, can you do? What would you do? Well, what I could? do maybe change my password. That's about all I can think about mm. or not use the same password. I think I'd be more worried. I am more, more worried about the third party apps that they could log into. I'm thinking like what apps third party. I don't know. Just like, um, well, I guess you can't log into any financial apps. My dating apps. <laughs> Just maybe I'm worried about that too. <laughs> <laughs> I know all of you guys are worried about your Bumble right now. Okay, so chill. Okay, that. so if you, if your phone got hacked, about that if your phone got hacked got right hacked. now, <laughs> okay, uh, I'll ask the question a different way. If someone in this room picked up your phone right now and were able to go through anything on your phone. What would be the one thing that you're like, don't open that and like jump across? If, if they if they were like, I'm opening this, what would be the one thing to make you jump across the room and be like, I can think no. of one thing. The other night, me and Pat were editing uh, a video and he was talking to some girl that uh, was on my dating app. I was on his phone. Nice. I jumped across the table. <laughs> he did, though. <laughs> Not because I Pat's liked her. game. Like, I don't know. I mean, he's he, probably helping you out, man. He probably was. I was, was trying problem. to. I didn't want, you know. For, for that's me, a slippery slope. It might be my, my Google search. <laughs> honestly, because. Yeah, probably my Google search. My too. That's private a good answer. browser. If you hit private. <laughs> no, you can't see all of it. You can't see all of my private. It doesn't keep honestly. your cookies, which is nice. Uh, <laughs> I know. Um, okay, I know we're not. I don't go through people's phones. I don't do that. Like, if, if I have a bay and I'm concerned about it, I will not do it i will not go into somebody's phone that's their phone i don't want to do it it's foreign territory i don't want anybody going in my phone so i'm not going to do it ignorance is bliss what is the most incriminating thing you have on facebook or in a third party app connected to facebook oh wow can we 
So I'm just going to tell you. Mine would be. You don't have to tell me exactly what it is, but like, is there? I don't. I don't think so. Are you worried about something? I'm not worried. I'm not like worried. I'm just concerned about my security (laughs) and what people have access to. So, um, oh, there's a website. What is website? Uh, I mean, I send nudes all the time, so it's kind of like, um, if someone's gonna get it, they're gonna get it. I mean. (laughs) Don't do that. Say no to dick pics. Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> dick pics or it didn't happen. Oh, okay. Here's some advice. WeLeakInfo.com. Go check it out. You can put in your email address, username, and you can see if your info has been leaked. I did this before the show today, and I need to go back and do a lot of research. Um, that was just one email address that I put in, and it tells you what website it was leaked from. So if one of the ones I had was 8tracks.com. It's a website where you like sign up for playlists. Is like play- yeah, yeah, it's like a I playlist used to website. To that back Dude, in the that day in website college. is dope. But it I used said to listen that- to this Miley Cyrus Biggie Smalls. Miley Cyrus Biggie Smalls. Playlist? Mashup playlist. It was fucking dope. Well, I my my stuff got taken from there. So mm. get. Wait, what is it? Get get leak. It is, get yeah. leak info. It was a oh. We leak info.com. Go check it out. Have you? No, you don't know. You don't know. Look into this Facebook thing, guys. It's important for you to worry about who has your data, who is looking at your personal private information. What think about what you're putting on personal and private on Facebook and in messages, what kind of information you're sending. Have you sent any bank information? Have you sent any social security numbers through Facebook? People might be able to see that. I'm just saying like, this is a public service announcement. PSA. Yeah, for definitely. Everybody. So that's news. Facebook, yeah. Hit us up. Let Good us know. Press. What? Man, they have been. Facebook They're what? Messing the up so for pe- the last. So people could log in <laughs> as you and have full access. So they could do whatever they wanted. They could post whatever they wanted. Yep. They could look at messages. Um, this is an issue because of all of, I mean, what Facebook has been used with the, the Russian uh, interference. Ooh, allegedly. Allegedly. I'm just saying Facebook could allegedly, buy good, but good publicity. Well, no. <laughs> well, you know, they're... They've been messing up, uh, you know, since about 2016. When when everybody was aware of... When you're innovating, you f- mess up a lot. I mean, they, they say that they're going to innovate and, uh, you know, when they mess up, they're just going to fix. But they kind of don't... I mean, the consequences are big and dire when you're somebody that's affecting the world like they are, you know, yeah. affecting political elections. Affecting, Absolutely. you know, Anyways. racism and, and, and stuff like that. You know, that, you know, send us the pics that you don't want Facebook hack to reveal. What? No, I don't, don't do want to see that. So they can reveal them. <laughs> so we can reveal we them. We will review but them. Check into your them. Facebook. Stay on top of this. We'll bring you guys news as, as we are learning about it. There hasn't been very much like details, but. Just watch out for your Facebooks. Um, All right. Well, you know what? We're going to play a song for you guys that we think you're going to love. Uh, it's a new song. Hear it here first. It and just then... came out. It's popping. No, it's popping to us. I don't know if it just came out. But here you go. Welcome back to the Millennials Podcast Hour. We're here with Sam Jones of the Jones family. And Jones myself, clan. I'm Pat, and I'm Ruby, and we're the Millennials. So thanks again for checking in with us. Uh, Jessica's on camera. Everybody knows Jessica with the good hair. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that good hair. And we're just hanging out here. Um, thanks, Sam, for joining us. This is actually a pretty rare You're occasion. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sam is our partner in crime, a partner in business, and our. Uh, no one's partner in the bed here, um, <laughs> if anyone was wondering. Unless there's a teddy bear. Uh, <laughs> but bear. Uh, There's Frank. Yeah, so as the millennials, we're, we're a collective, and we do um, dope work shit. together. We do dope shit, and this is who we are. We do Stuff. a podcast, and we're here for you, so hit us up. But, yeah, this is um, – Sam is here as our guest tonight. Uh, as a courtesy, really, he's not uh, – he likes to be behind the camera. As a matter of fact, he's a little bit upset about not getting all the angles 
<laughs> that it was we, a discussion tonight. Uh, it was a discussion, but we we figured it out. We did figure it out. So he's sitting yeah. here enjoying the conversation with us. I so um, we're well, glad to have you, Sam. Well, I'm glad to be here, guys. Thanks, yeah, thanks for thank being you. on. In more ways than one, more, and not just as a guest on the podcast. But as yeah. a person, you we know, you. I have. Uh, if I can go on a little tangent here, I have enjoyed the last year with these guys. I mean, they brought me on and and. Really gave me the motivation to come back and, and, you know, have a little bit of purpose, have a little say uh, what's going on in our community. And uh, I feel like stuff that's going to be coming out uh, with us and and with with this podcast and some of the content that we're doing with Relinials Media, I mean, uh, really, it has been a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I am glad to be here. Good. How exciting. Awesome. You say that. Um, and so as the millennials, uh, if you guys don't already know, our day ones out there already know, who day have been ones. listening from the audio podcast, uh, we are the real millennials. So that's the word real plus millennial. I always, I don't, we just have to make sure to say that. I, some people mm. don't put it together. I don't know. Well, for those of you who put it together, uh, we're here and we're being real. And we just want to know, uh, Sam, as our guest tonight, what is real? to you what is real to me what is real to you i think really the real thing right now for uh us and uh people all across america is the midterm elections i think that is a real thing that we uh we ought to take seriously uh especially people that uh and i would consider myself uh in the opposition um if if this is a moment where we can step up wait, wait can you define the opposition uh yeah, I think uh just opposite of the uh you know the re- Republican platform. Really opposite honestly. of the, of the okay. current party okay. in power. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I think we see a conservative swing after the Obama era and uh there's a big election that's coming up. There's I mean we have this could be the third supreme justice that's elected or you know nominated to the supreme court justice supreme court justice yeah and uh united states supreme court justice absolutely there are state supreme courts (laughs) with justices supreme over all courts and and, you know as we see that in politics now i mean that is the rubber stamp of the executive orders that we see coming out of that and uh you know um it's a big deal I, I, I truly, for anybody that has liberal ties, moderate ties, uh, you You're know, independent. This, I would call myself independent. I would call nice. myself independent because, you know, I am from the Midwest and I do travel a lot to California and, uh, um, you know, there's some things that I am a little more conservative on, but I do think that, uh, if you don't voice your opinion and the local, jurisdiction then uh i mean you forfeit everything the uh, your your voice to the democratic process and yeah. it's very important to get out there and to make sure that your voice is heard along with everybody else um i mean and right now you know we're at a point where where we can see in history it's a it's a turning point how do we want to see this republic go do we want to see it more uh autocratic or do we want to see a more democratic? Do do we want the people to make the right choice? Can you define autocratic for us, please? I think uh, anytime the executive branch takes control over uh, legislation and uses what we see in uh, the judicial branch right now as a rubber stamp on executive orders, um, that's when you see it a little more autocratic. And the democratic processes is through, you know, like we've talked about the Facebook processes of compromising of data and fake news and, and the uh, influence of um, international influences on our poli- and political te- system. Sure. Using technology. Sure, sure. I mean, we're we're in an era that's, I mean, it's the Wild West. You know, is, is it illegal or is it legal? We don't know. And mm. uh, well, but it has a direct impact. That's really real. I mean, it is real. It is real, and our generation will define that for generations to come. And we will look back three, four hundred years from now as bookends to history. And it's another day yeah. for us, but people will realize, you know, the Trump administration 
there's been some unprecedented things that have come out of this cabinet. And, uh, you know, I think... A lot of disappointments. A lot of disappointments. Well. I, you know, and me personally, I, you know, I, I, I don't agree with a lot of things that are coming out there, but I, uh, you know, on the local level, we can do our part mm -hmm. in being in these local elections. So I think that's the most important thing that we can do. And that's the biggest point that your voice can be, uh, is in these local elections and actually caring, you know, a lot of people just. They throw up their hands and say, my part doesn't matter, and anything that I can do doesn't matter. And that's not true. It's not. Everybody has a, a house divided. As Lincoln, our great President Lincoln would say, a house divided can never stand. How would, how would you say that uh, uh, us as the millennial generation plays into that factor? Uh, well, I mean, we are the generation that grew up with this technology. So... We will be the ones that define this technology, whether it's a, it's a good thing or a bad thing. As, as, it, as it pertains to the continuation or discontinuation, if you will, of our current political climate. Um, well, in, in the current political climate, the community is now very small. So, What community specifically? Uh, I would think a political community uh, and definitely with the polarization. An independent community or a liberal community like what specifically or just in general people who just care about politics not everybody on facebook cares about politics you're right no i mean they're most just people there to some see there for the puppy pictures they're, they're for the puppy pictures <laughs> and the engagement and vacation photos. who doesn't love puppy pictures exactly uh whose life is better than who uh no i think right now facebook is definitely you know, I mean, linguistically, they haven't figured out how to eradicate racism on their platform, which is a big deal politically. Okay. Um, as you can see in the Southeast Asian countries. Um, Burma. You know, Burma. Can you eliminate <laughs> racism? Is no. that allowed? No. It's not. I mean, it's freedom of speech, right? It's protected. Uh, I don't know if it's protected. Well, when it's like cultural differences that aren't understood, it can come out as blatant racism. If it's but racism is in and of itself is not illegal. No, it's not illegal. But hate speech is though. Hate. Hate. Well, yeah. okay. So there's and then the is, 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 of it. But then, can you have a platform that uh, can disguise news and rhetoric uh, under the guise of racism? I mean, can you or does hold? It regulate it? Can you That's hold Facebook too. to the same? Uh, legal situations like libel and as a government you can't or no other news outlets am I, this is my opinion my opinion is that facebook is a business just like any other business they're allowed to so is CNN regulate and, Fox, and they can't say they can't miss they can't can conflate truth but they're allowed to regulate whatever content they want right so like so this is okay. So there's an argument, and this uh, this was more popular back in basically 2016, all right, when Missouri University was in trouble for um, like racism, basically, right? There was a big thing. It dropped the uh, enrollment rate for new freshmen by a ton, like 25 percent, because of what was perceived as racism on campus, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's a, there's an argument of like, what is racism, like. What is freedom of speech, more specifically, as it pertains to the Constitution? And the thing is, is that, like, okay, people are technically allowed to be racist. You can say, I don't like a certain race, and that's perfectly fine. When you say... But is it perfectly fine? Because you can't say profanity it's, in, in, in you a can public situation. The difference but, but is when it's, it, is when, it's when it's threatening. When it's threatening or when it's limiting in terms of options. I think freedom of speech... That's more racism. Inclined. It's, what, racism what the, is implied also power over a particular other race. Freedom of speech is, is being able to voice your opposition to the political party in power. And I do believe that's what our founding fathers wanted to happen. That's freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. You can voice your opinion to... But also about religion and also about anything at all, literally. All. All legislation. All legislation. Think about, like, you know, and I'm... I'm uh, one of my favorite historians, Mike Duncan, I'm listening to his Revolutions podcast right now, specifically about the Mexican Revolution and the Diaz, the, uh, you know, the, portfo the portfolio uh, regime that...
did not want a democratic election. They wanted to silence the opposition. And so they arrested all the people that would run against him and not have a free and democratic process. And that is something that is very unique to our country. We do still have the semblance of a so democratic process. So it's interesting process. about the uh, uh, the prospect of free speech, right? Because and it's... We got into it. Like, <laughs> beca- because it is... You can't say racist the the line between you can't say racist things and you can't say political things is a very very thin line. I think racism right? now is a political rhetoric so. I mean now now we're seeing with the black lives matter which movement Which is why which is why you can't limit political it. rhetoric. It's, you can't it, limit it. I think it's also about intention and it delivery is about intention. and it's tone. About, it's and also it's, about it's, power. It's a combination. Oh, it's definitely about power. But if you can utilize the minority vote to me to to, to prop up, uh, you know, a platform that you're running for, that's rhetoric. You know, and that's that political. Is rhetoric. That is political rhetoric but, that we're and seeing. That, and that's that line. That's that thin line of where it can turn into power. You know, there, is, there's I mean, freedom. There's, there's freedom of power. speech to the point where it's like, you're allowed to say whatever you want, and that that's protected because of the reasons uh, that are political, mm-hmm. right? And so, but what comes into importance in terms of racism and oppression is when someone has power. It's with someone that is in political importance or even like money importance. Uh, the billionaires who are in direct connection with politicians when yeah. they're racist. And they are devising plans and policies that are in direct opposition of the success of a particular race. Well, I mean, if we want to talk about the Hispanic migration right now, I I, I mean, I think when it comes to that kind of racism, you're thinking a, a shift in demographic, especially when it comes to districts within the political scope. So now you're you're seeing things ethnically change within other regions that uh, you know haven't always been present. So that's when you get the the resistance to immigration. And um, who is calling you right now? That Sam's phone ringing. Someone forgot to answer. Tell your mom we said hi. Answer it. You have to answer it now. Um, If your phone rings while you're on cam, you gotta answer it. Some From now on. Some number I have first, had no clue who this it is. This is for future guests. When you're watching and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to be on the Real Anneals. Don't let your phone ring while you're here. You're going to have to answer your mom's call. I truly, right. I truly believe, though, I mean, there's been immigration in this country, uh, southern of our south border. That's been, I mean, present since early 1700s, predates the Texas Republic. I mean, Texas at one point was part of the Mexican empire and you know it, it, i think it's only been unique in the last maybe 20 years that we see and, and i think that has that has to do with political affiliation to uh what we see in the texas you know region the arizona region the new mexican region um so okay we're, so we're seeing a lot of politicians you have a that very... are Hispa- hispanic origins that are coming out of there and so the demographic has changed which changed politics all over you know changes politics in washington you, you which have is the a big... very you have a very thorough understanding of historical context you're, i was you're about to say that you're a historian sam what is really into is... history what is your perspective of the millennial generation and how does it fit in historic in a historical context about how we fit into everything right now because as you described earlier right now we're at essentially a turning point and millennials are right now the biggest uh the most um purchasing power parity right uh the most um they have the biggest influence right now in terms of the economy in terms of socially what is happening may uh maybe that's not true maybe the older pa- people in power have that power yeah but they set up the systems and that's still in power where, right do, now, where do millennials fit in in that equation for you in like now and in the future can, uh, I, can I intervene there real quick sam ha- sam is very into history and part of the reason why we have sam on right now is because we want you guys to know our interests what we as millennials do when we're not on camera and sam is one of the people that if we have questions about anything historical 
that's who we asked to geek out on it. Um, so we all have different things that we like and that we're going to be bringing to you throughout the season. So just know that Sam is going to be one of our history buffs. He could come out with a documentary on something, you know. So just look look for that because um, – Sam is going to be behind the camera a lot of times, but we want to highlight that he's, he could be working on some projects that have to do with a variety of things. What else, Sam? Like you like history, music, uh, guitar, film, just a lot of things. So, um, Sam is a pretty well-rounded person and speaking on the historical context of, um, where, um, you know, there's a big comparison. I mean, a lot of a lot of people, especially American historians, want to compare us to the greatest republic of all time, which is the Roman Republic. Mm-hmm. And we do see what, a lot uh, of. Uh, why are they considered the greatest? Who says? Says uh, who? I think because the Roman White Republic. I mean, you can't write history from about three or four hundred BC to about six hundred AD. There's about 12 to 1800 years where you can't write about western history without talking about the roman republic and people that are roman empire emperors and um you know that's that's a big deal if you can have that kind of influence on the trajectory of history of all peoples if a quarter of we do I mean, have it right now. No, no. I mean, we're we're big regional influence on what we do. I think after I the think Second World I War, I think we're making the presumption here, which is uh, straight is forward forward thinking that uh, we're making a presumption that people a thousand years from now are not going to be aware of what the millennials are. Right? They're making that presumption. I mean, because millennials and it, there's as people as like us, Cicero as, and you know, like millennials, our uh, generation, millennials. our millennial uh, generation, us specific. Specifically, I, I mean, us three. okay, but let me just, we are not just the millennials. You guys are millennials. This is a this is a cohort. This is a generation. This isn't just. This is a mindset, so I want you guys to remember that we are not just the millennials. You're a millennial if you are real and you're a millennial and you deal with real shit you're a millennial so it's not it, it's we're, bigger we're than in just this us. together it's, we're all in this together it's bigger than just us we're so all just figuring this we, out we no one do ha- have no one say. is sway in this equation no one got all the answers so i don't have the answers either he didn't even answer kanye he never answered he just asked you ain't nobody- got the answers <laughs> sway but you already knew that anyways Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna Sam is gonna come through on the historical tip, and you guys are gonna want to tune into that shit. Cause yes. if you guys don't understand, if you haven't been in history classes, you guys are not gonna understand the context in which or how the dynamics of the political system is playing out. History is so so very important, and uh. I don't know how else to explain that other than to just tune into what Sam has to say. Yeah, we I'd literally say if, could uh, talk about it forever. If I could say history is important because you got to know the path that you've been on to know where you're going. Mm-hmm. There's a good, I mean, a line has its angles and trajectory. And if you can see where you've been, you might know where you're going. And, uh, you know, I don't think the American Republic is as great as the Roman Republic. I don't think we're quite there. But, you know, there's some things that for the average, for there's things that the Roman Republic messed up on, on assimilating um, barbarian tribes that, you know, could have been adequately assimilated into the Roman Republic in a, in a better way. And, and the management of, of the wealth gap and and within the republic and we're seeing a big wealth gap within our own country right now that's really honestly in my opinion disgusting and we will get to that and you guys stay tuned for that absolutely we will get to that these are issues that we want to talk about um sam to can we we want to know a little bit more about your life so what else is what's really real in your life right now what are you excited about what are you working on what can we expect out of you other than history that's something that we brought up (laughs) but is there anything else i could tell you about what i saw on his bumble (laughs) 
Well, what's not it? much there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there and where, where can people there. find you? Uh, also, at you it know, was hard to see between well, the crack in Kansas City. He's phone. everywhere, guys. I he's, am. Uh, he's not. I'm all over in Kansas City all the time. But Literally, uh, two days. I will actually be out in uh, San Coast Jose. Lot. Yep, I'll be out on the West Coast. I'll be out in San Jose, California. Um, I do a lot of uh, sporting events out there, um, but I think. What you can expect out of me specifically is uh, we're going to be commenting on uh, social issues, uh, f- you know, through video narratively. And uh, right now, a uh, film that me and Ruby worked on is on Amazon Prime. Absolutely. Goodland. Go watch. Uh, Goodland. Goodland. Watch Go Goodland. watch Hashtag it. Hashtag uh, watch Goodland. Yes. Please, please, please. Um, and, and that's what we're about. Telling stories that uh, maybe uh, speaks to where you're at speaks to where you're going Mm -hmm. um stories that are important to us um and and that's what we're trying to do right now is uh craft narratives that um are important to the community yeah yeah i could say that uh definitely crafting those stories that are not that okay so there's not a story that hasn't been told a thousand times but there has not been a story that's been told a thousand times from us you know, and so they're, they're, the thing about yeah. stories is perspective, right? And it's about w- the perspective that the story is being told from, right? And, and that's the like that's the first thing you learn day one in writing 101 is like w- what perspective are you writing from? Are you writing from the main character? Are you writing on the present as someone that knows more than all the characters? Are you writing from a secondary character who knows more than what the main character knows? You know, so it's important to be aware of the perspective in which you're analyzing anything that you're analyzing. In life, too. That's great life advice, also, as you're writing your own story right now. Let's be inspirational for a second. <laughs> and so we, we definitely have an interest. We, we definitely have an interest as a collective to tell those narrative stories. But um, what we, we really are paying attention to is the perspective of the narrative. Yeah, I mean, in in Absolutely. one, I'm listening to a podcast right now. If nobody is listening to Serial season three, you're messing up. Oh my up. gosh, I need to get on. Huge that time, you're messing up. But we're uh, what that actually dives into is the criminal system uh, in this country and how it is just so prejudiced. Mm. How is I mean, it's mm. skewed mm. to keep mm. the oppressed oppressed. And damn, Absolutely. if I have to say that, you know, I hope in the future. That things do get corrected, but I, can, my descendants are not punished for my ancestors. Can, can I ask you a question? Th- is that the first insight into how, into an understanding of how oppression works in the, in the judicial system specifically? No, because I have my own contacts. I don't want to get into it, but I do have my own contacts into the judicial system and how it works. Okay, uh, so and, I and, ask and, the question and, and specifically, way. if I could say, you know, if you have a criminal charge, a misdemeanor is is you know a plead out, and I've me personally i've had to plea out to misdemeanors not because i'm i'm of any kind of minority and it's worse for minorities and uh you know (laughs) the criminal system is is a form of oppression for minority groups in this country that are preyed upon through you know law enforcement and the processes that come from that Mm -hmm system man it's it's we could get into that for hours honestly the term is systematic oppression but we don't have to get into that tonight this is a different conversation (laughs) so um all right so in in summary in some nation if you can nail it down in a paragraph what is real life for you right now uh well real life for me right now is uh i travel every week for my job um you know, I make films with you guys. Mm-hmm. We sit here and we discuss <laughs> stories that we want to uh, tell clients that we have to work, and you know, honestly, just making ends meet. Yeah. And uh, that's real. Making sure that uh, every day is not a waste. 
every day that I wake up I have a purpose and it's to make sure that uh, it's changing the history that I love I know and will come to know mm. can I ask you a question uh, really this is real. a sub question yeah as such a history buff like are you concerned on a daily basis from day to day about how your am your personal life will impact history or are you of the disposition that you're you're insignificant and you don't believe that the actions of your life will impact history oh i'm always i'm 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 insignificant first and foremost because uh i was raised to be a humble person by my mother but i will change history through the people that i love through the people mm. that care to love me and through the people that want to know my views and I think that's the most important thing because you don't know the the ripples of the splash of the rock that you throw in the pool of life. And, uh, you know, yep. for better or worse, I am who I am. And I try to be the, the realest person I can be in any project that I take on. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm insignificant. But that's only because I want to be. I just... You know, if people care about what I have to say, then they'll listen. If they don't, then then they don't. They don't have to listen to me. But, you know, as history goes, I can respect it. I see the trajectory, and, you know, I was born into <laughs> not the, you know, the right family to actually be making uh, legislation on a, on a great level. There will not be histories written about me, but I do think I have impact on my sphere of influence. And that's what I'm trying to do here. And that's profound because uh, I think that if uh, people understood that that does make an impact, I think it does. Then, I uh, mean, your world is your world. Yeah, your sphere of influence. That's a, a profound. Could move into somebody thought. else's sphere sphere of influence. So. Are we still recording on that? No. Oh, okay. Why not? They cut off. There's oh. no more space on my phone. We did a lot of takes, man. Um, Sam is gonna be hanging out with us for other podcast episodes but he'll be behind the camera so you guys will not see him sometimes but he will always be here uh we really appreciate his insight and everything that he brings to the table and you know we wanted to pick his brain about just what he thinks how he operates this is why we make a good team because we all are passionate about bringing you our viewers and our 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 peoples are millennials we uh we're excited about bringing you guys good content and i'm gonna interrupt ruby disrespectfully hey. but you know that is something that all three of us i think have always had a passion and this is the reason why we do this and any anybody's inputs or or people that you know we hear their stories you know that's something that uh, we deeply care about. I mean, we have somebody that we work with right now about mental health, which is something that we all deal with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not about the money. He said it did it, and I was like, all right, good. Outro time. Bye. <laughs> all right, Sam Jones, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Not just tonight, but, like, always on yeah. the reg. Oh, it's uh. <laughs> genuinely <laughs> genuinely a pleasure to know you and to work with you on a daily basis um your thinking and your thought process is profound and complex and it just is enriches everything that we're trying to do uh and i hope you know that and that's how i, I do know I that feel about it. i do know that and i know the reason why we're here you know we can make no money doing anything but if we you know, influence community, influence the the sphere, like I said, that uh, we're a part of for the better. Mm -hmm. I I think that's the most profound thing that we can do. And that's why we're here. We're artists. And that's what we're doing. We're creatives. Yeah. We're people that genuinely care about our own community and the people that are systemically oppressed. And, you know, I, I'm part of a community that's part of that. How do I affect that? How do I affect that change? How can I be a better part of the world that I want to see later on down the road? Um, and that's what we're here to do, to tell those stories. And we actively work within that community. And 
I feel blessed every day. I, I get to wake up and, and do these kind of things. So, you know. Uh, All right. Well, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Can I get a hug in? Don't. All right. Let's do a high five. Woo! We'll hug later. It'll be All good. All right, time. everybody. Uh, applause. Give a thumbs up for Sam Jones on the podcast. Uh, you're definitely going to be giving thumbs up when you see that what he has to offer on the cinematic tip. Um, and, yeah, thanks so much for tuning into the Millennials. This is who we are. This is what we do. And we're going to be coming to you on the reg. So uh, check out the video format. Check out the audio format. We're on the radio. We are on the radio now, so you can tune into 100.1, One Kansas City Radio, to hear us. We're going to have a weekly show. So that's actually what's new. We didn't even mention that at the beginning, but we're going to be on the radio. We're going to have a podcast online, and you're going to be able to catch these videos on our website and on YouTube and anywhere else we decide to put it. So stay woke, um, question everything around you, and come back and visit us eventually. I'm Ruby. I'm Pat. And I am Sam. Hit us up on Instagram. Uh, you can hit us up at the Relentials at Gmail. Just search the Relentials and hit us up. up. Hit us up our website. Uh, we also, yeah, that's what we do. So hit us up. Uh, you got any questions? You got any things uh, that we missed or that we got wrong on the podcast? Let us know. And that's how we end it. <laughs>